It's time for everyone's favorite game, Ray of Plight. Dan initially chose the 90s alternative rock band Fastball to talk about on today's program. He waited until I had listened to all eight of Fastball's albums before he changed his mind and decided to talk about Madonna instead. So now, since he loves Fastball so much, A, he should marry them, and B, he must be punished. I will ask Dan three questions about Fastball, and I will ask Owen three questions about Madonna. The loser will suffer a curse upon their house for the next 300 generations. I want to take a quick moment here and uh, we're going to no, flip right. the script a little bit. So so the narrative you, dear listener, have been told is that I picked Fastball and I waited for our, our dear host to, uh, to listen to every album before I changed my mind. He came to me and said, there's no story here. Fastball <laughs> isn't interesting. And I said, shit, man, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do somebody <laughs> who, I don't know, your listeners will find interesting. So I picked Madonna, like a good friend. <laughs> Because there's a story there, and we don't have to talk about boring old fastball. You prick. Question one, Dan, name every member of Fastball. Uh, you know, um, Sandy Koufax. <clears throat> Incorrect. Mm -hmm. Owen, name every member of Madonna. Uh, Madonna. That is correct. Question. Can, can we pause real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, this seems like maybe an unfair punishment. <laughs> Question two. Dan, name each of Fastball's eight albums in chronological order. Fastball. Um, You're keep, already wrong. Keep your wig on. I remember that one. Um, Owen. Question two. Name Madonna's first album, Madonna, in chronological order. Madonna. Well done. <laughs> Dan, question three. What was Fastball's original name? Skid Row. You're so close. Magneto USA. Close. Owen, question three. What was Madonna's original name? Go Madonna. That is correct. Very good. Owen, you and your next 300 generations of descendants will live uh, pox free. Dan, thanks for playing. I don't know why you wanted to start on such an egg. Antagonistic note. This is a sweet program it's full of nice people doing saying nice and like I am gonna have a curse on my fucking house. It's just a quick 300 generations. It'll be over before you know it. This is Deep Dive Divas. Each episode, myself and a guest diva listen to every blessed studio album by an artist of their choosing and share our findings with you. <laughs> <laughs> Talking Madonna. When you call my name, it's like a little prayer. I'm down on my knees. I want to take you there in the midnight hour. I can feel your power just like a prayer. You know, I'll take you there. I hear your voice. It's like Angel 
She has been named the queen of pop music. She's a singer and songwriter who has also made a career in film. To date, in 2024, she has 14 records and has sold more records than any other female recording artist, with sales topping over 300 million albums. She's uh, had more appearances on the Billboard Hot 100 than any other solo artist to date. And there is such a massive body of scholarly and interdisciplinary literature on Madonna that there's been a field of academia called Madonna Studies since the late 1980s. Dan! Yeah. Uh, hello. You chose Madonna for right. today's program. You bet your ass I did. Why? <clears throat> Follow me back, if you will. Oh. To the year 2003. Mm. I am 12 years old. Uh-huh. It's June. One of those magic June evenings. You know the ones where there's just like this this something in the air that makes everything feel possible? Mm-hmm. Like, like you could do anything. You're walking on air, right? I think that was the Agent Orange they sprayed in our neighborhood. <laughs> that helps, too. Yeah. So it's one of those magical June nights, and I'm out playing a little ding-dong ditch with the boys. And I go for a little break uh, at the uh, the Wawa. You know the one. Mm-hmm. The one on Burma Road. Sure. Have you explained to your listeners what a Wawa is? No. It's a convenience store. People like it a lot around here. Anyway, I'm going to the Wawa, and on my way in, I bump into a young lady from my class who I happen to have the hots for. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> yeah. So I, I bump into her, and, you know, like, hey, how you doing? You know, just, uh, just out, you know. Playing a little ding dong ditch with the boys, you know. And she's like, oh my God, it's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. And like, just like totally nailed the interaction in a 12 year old boy kind of way, mm-hmm. you know? So I go into the Wawa and uh, I've worked up a thirst, you know, playing ding dong ditch with the boys and bumping into my crush. So I go to the cooler and I pick out, and I, I'm a man who likes a fact. So I pick out a Snapple for my beverage and I can't wait. I open it up, you know, I, I, I gotta get the facts. But all of a sudden, I become aware of the song that's playing at the Wawa, and it's Crazy For You by Madonna. And it's going right into that part at the end, you know, where she goes, Touch me once and you know it's true. That bit, you know, where it really elevates. And my little 12-year-old heart just goes back to the interaction I just had with the young lady. And it's like, it's like that boom, 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 you know? You know, like 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 that that feeling that like only like an adolescent person can feel, uh-huh. you know? And all of a sudden, I just go into a trance. The Snapple in my trance Slips out of my hand, smashes all across the floor. There's glass everywhere. <laughs> and I just space, I come to from my trance of Madonna and I just run out the door. <laughs> Wait, you, you didn't even pay for it? Nope, nope, I just ran away. I just ran away like well, a Mr. little. Mr. Wawa was devastated, I'm sure. <laughs> really hit him, really hit him in the wallet. Sure did. Was I with you? Uh, I don't think I so. I don't think so. No, no, mm. no. But if you recall, uh, the last episode I did with you, who was that? What? Built to Spill! It's a sequel, baby! <laughs> anyway, ever since I've always kind of, um, I've always kind of low key th- like, liked that song and thought, yeah, you know, I think I kind of like Madonna, but I shouldn't tell anybody about it. It was kind of like a guilty pleasure. And, um, you know, here we are. Well, follow me back, if you will, to the year of 1958. I can't. They already followed me back if they would. They could go back further. Okay. It's actually less of a, a trip now. Yeah, you know, I, I say you, you did us a favor. Yeah. And we're going to Bay City, Michigan, baby, where on August 16th, one Madonna Louise is pushing a baby out of her womb, and she gives birth to Madonna Louise Siccone. Madonna's family was an Italian slash French Canadian Catholic family. Uh, Again, her mother was Madonna Louise, so she's technically a junior. And her father was Silvio Doni Siccone. Uh, Their family called our Madonna Little Nani. Wait, they they called the baby Nani? Yeah, like as a nickname, Little Nani. Nani, Nani. Isn't that what you call your grandmother? Well, she was Little Nani. Was she a tiny grandmother? Oh, oh, Nani, Nani. (laughs) Did she come out making meatballs? Her dad, Tony, worked for Chrysler and General Dynamics as an optics engineer on their military sector. Those jobs, I'm sure, do not exist in Michigan anymore. She has two brothers, Anthony and Martin, as well as her younger sister, Paula, 
and her younger brother, Christopher, with whom she has collaborated on various creative endeavors. Uh, and they're the closest of the siblings. And she also has her youngest sister, Melanie. With the exception of Melanie, all of the children were conceived and born within five years. 1963, just weeks before little Nani's fifth Christmas, her mom dies from breast cancer. She was only 30 years old. Jeez. Something I never heard about with Madonna. She continued to live with her father in Pontiac and Rochester Hills, just outside of Detroit. Just a few years later, in 1966, Madonna was confirmed as a Catholic at the age of eight. I guess they used to do that way younger back then. How old? Eight. No. And she, you're eight. You can determine what happens to your soul for the rest of eternity. I don't think it's going to impact her curative output at all. Well, her father gets remarried in 1966, just three years after her mother's passing. To one Joan Gustafson, who was their housekeeper. Yeah. Madonna hated Joan Gustafson. She hated her father for doing this. She hated everything all the time. Little Nani was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and what made matters worse was that Joan brought little baby Jennifer into the world the year after or months after her father wed Joan. 1968. Madonna gets another half sibling, Mario. Sorry, Mario. I have to pull up my notes. What Her percent of this show is you guys just, um, you know, just being culturally insensitive? It's really only to the Italians, and the Brits, and the, uh, lot of the you guys. Well, that's you, out of respect. You guys go hard on the Brits. Yeah. We uh -huh. think there's a difference between appropriation and appreciation, and we appreciate the Brits. So every time they mention you mention London, you yell Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. You think that's appreciation? Yeah. I mean, it's really. Holy yeah. hell. See, Madonna's relationship with Tony, her father, was exceptionally rocky by this time, and she begins working really hard in Catholic school to achieve an excellent GPA because she's getting attention at school. So she's like, I, these will be the adults in my life. The Catholic Church, what could go wrong? They're the most trusted adults there are. Sure. As, as a graduate of Catholic school, would you say this is a good plan? <laughs> Yeah, I, I personally had all my validation as a child from the, um, the Pope. underfunded yet somehow very expensive schools that I went to. <laughs> so while she was at Catholic school, she did very well in class. But between classes, that was Madonna's time to shine. She would behave in erratic ways, doing cartwheels through the halls of her schools, hanging upside down on monkey bars so everyone could see her underwear. Are you telling me Stuff you did. Madonna wanted attention? I did yeah. that too. I don't believe that for a hot second. Madonna has said in reflection that she was, quote, a lonely girl who was searching for something. I cared about being good at something. I didn't shave my underarms and I didn't wear makeup like normal girls do. But I studied and I got good grades. I wanted to be somebody. It was around this time that Madonna asked her father, Tony, to send her to ballet lessons. And she does. And her teacher, Christopher Flynn, told her that she could go into dancing as a career. 1972, Madonna is now 13 years old. And she enrolls at the Rochester Adams High School, a public school where she joined uh, the cheerleading squad and earned A's in all of her classes. She graduates in 76 and gets a scholarship for dance from the University of Michigan. Dance. Wow. She promptly dance. drops out of college and moves to New York City. <laughs> Madonna said, quote, it was the first time I'd ever taken a plane. The first time I'd ever gotten in a taxi. I came here with $35 in my pocket. It was the bravest thing I'd ever done. And by all accounts, that's true. She had like nothing when she moved to New York. Although $35 in 1978, you, you could... I would get you a couple hot dogs. Yeah, and, and a room in Trump Tower. <laughs> Madonna moves to the Alphabet City section of the East Village, a place renowned for drug use and destitution. <laughs> It is here that she works as an art model in 1978, where she was asked to pose nude for $25 each session. <laughs> Put that in the back of your mind, because that will become important later. Oh, yeah. She takes up a job at Dunkin' Donuts and, more pertinently, getting gigs with various dance troupes. She studied dance under Martha Graham of the Graham Technique fame. A really big deal in dance. I didn't put really it, know it anything about gram. it. But yes. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts more like dance and donuts. But Martha Graham basically uh, <laughs> revolutionizes modern dance. And Madonna starts getting work as a backup dancer and performs at the Pearl Lang Dance Theater. As she was coming home from rehearsal one night, two men put a knife to her throat and raped her. 
Madonna said of this tragedy that it gave her, quote, a taste of my weakness. It showed me that I still could not save myself in spite of all the strong girl show. I could never forget it. This is something I had no idea happened to her. Yeah, that's horrifying. Mm hmm. Well, she stays in New York City in 1979. Madonna auditions to serve as a backup singer and dancer for French disco sensation Patrick Hernandez. She is to spend three months touring with him and even treats herself to a little trip to Tunisia before returning. You know, that's actually when I need to get away. You know, my first thought is like, like, yeah, you know, Tunisia, first try, you know. Just before she left on the tour, she started seeing a musician named Dan Gilroy. Upon her return from the tour, they move in together in an abandoned synagogue and start a band called The Breakfast Club. I guess it's 1979, so before. Okay, predates the film. Okay. Madonna played guitar, drums, and sang until her old boyfriend from Michigan, Stephen Bray, takes over on drums. So she is now with her current boyfriend and her old boyfriend in an abandoned synagogue. Mm. (laughs) I also didn't know Madonna played an instrument. She played guitar and drums. Yeah. I think this is um, good fodder for a sitcom. (laughs) My two boyfriends. (laughs) Oy vey. (laughs) Now, to help support herself... She worked in the Russian Tea Room near Carnegie Hall Tower, and she worked in the coat, the coat check there. She also appeared in a film called A Certain Sacrifice, a very low budget and small film, and it wouldn't be released for another six years. 1980, welcome to the Reagan years. And Madonna years, really. Stephen Bray and Madonna quit The Breakfast Club. And start a new band called the Lunch Association. No, uh, they start a new band called Emmy and the Emmys. So much worse. I think I'd take the Lunch Association. They actually record a four song tape together in November of 1980, which they could have used to promote the band. But instead, Madonna almost immediately decides to quit the band and go alone. Good for her. So the following year, Madonna is able to get the attention of the head of Gotham Records, Camille Barbone, which uh, is run out of the music building, a massive rehearsal space where Madonna and Steven started squatting and living. A lot of people don't know that record company is also owned by Batman. He's moving the fade. Barbone got her a contract and served as her manager for about a year. Madonna cuts a demo and starts going out to nightclubs to ask DJs to play her songs. <laughs> At the Danceteria, a DJ named Mark Kamins likes what he hears when she kind of peer pressures him into playing her music, and they enter a romance together. Yeah. So Mark Kamins gets Madonna in a meeting with the president of Sire Records, Seymour Stein, the Seymour Stein who signed everyone from the Ramones to the Talking Heads to, of course, Madonna. This label is owned by Warner Brothers Records. And they cut a deal for three singles, as well as an option for a full record if they like what they hear. So Madonna is getting her. This is her big break. 1982, Madonna and Mark work together to make her debut single entitled Everybody. Yeah. Which she performs at the Danceteria Live. In 1983, Madonna begins performing the track on the television show, 
Dancing on Air, which was filmed live at Channel 17 Studios in Philadelphia for WPHL. Hot diggity dog. Mm -hmm. She does a little tour of the nightclubs of the UK as well. She's going to exotic places like Philadelphia and the United Kingdom, performing live across the island. Madonna's second single, Burning Up, comes out in March of 1983. Both of her singles will get to number three on the Billboard Hot Dance Club songs chart. Burning Up Rips. Strikes up a romantic relationship with Jean-Michel Basquiat. Wait, really? A member of the neo-expressionist movement and did a lot of work uh, with graffiti, but was also an accomplished painter. He was only 21 when he was invited to hold galleries at Documenta in Germany and 22 when he held an exhibit at New York's Whitney Biennial. Crazy life. He was only two years Madonna's junior. I have uh, one of his posters in my room. Is it the cover of the Strokes album, The New Abnormal? Yes. Mm. I figured. Warner Brothers is pleased with the success of Madonna singles, so they agree. Let's do that full-length record. Miles Davis's rhythm guitarist, one Reginald Grant Lucas, is brought on to produce this album. They get into the studio together, and Madonna hates everything that he is doing. <laughs> So she petitions a DJ at the New York City club called Funhouse to come in and finish producing the album, and he does. He also remixes the majority of the record into extended dance tracks, which makes her take off in clubs. And you'll be surprised to know it, but they start dating then. <laughs> well, this brings us to that album, Madonna's First, which is Owen so eruditely uh, explained to us at the beginning of the show, is simply entitled Madonna. It's only eight songs long. I liked Lucky Star. I found it to be super anthemic and indicative of uh, the 80s. I like all those polyphonic melodies and hooks. Lucky Star is actually not one of my notable tracks in this okay. one. Um, I, I did, I generally liked the album as far as Madonna albums go. Um, my take on it, going like back in time to listen to it, was kind of like Madonna has this brand as a provocateur, and this album was quite tame. There's a lot of like, let me be a girl kind of songs, and yeah. it's like, eh, you know. That's but fine. that was her life at the time. This is true. This is true. She wasn't She wasn't ready to, to show us the... The sure. rebellious nature. Um, but um, it seems like it's dumb fun, like borderline holiday. Like they're just fun. Which know? actually is uh, borderline. My uh, my yummy, yummy. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. First. No wow. way. Out the gate. You're lying. Yeah. I'm not lying. You're me, lying. Me and I've always had a pool on this. We, we did not think all you would boys. do borderline. Yeah. You, all the we boys. Went, all which the boys? boys. The boys I went ding all dong get them with? Yeah. yeah. Holy schnibs. How'd you track them down? <laughs> Well, it if you look under your wild chair, wild. you'll find. <laughs> All right, go on. Tell us why you like Borderline so much. Uh, I think it's just catchy as hell. Um, and I, I, I think it's like one of those songs I could listen to forever because the way the chorus ends flows right back into the way the chorus begins mm -hmm. in a perfect kind of seamless way where if it just kept going, keep on pushing my love over the borderline. It's crazy. I didn't know that. Borderline. Like I'm going to lose my... You could do it over and over again forever. Never get old. I play it at my funeral. Don't care.
<laughs> Most of these songs I thought could be clipped by about two minutes. Couldn't agree more. Um, but I also see now having done the research, I get why they're that long because she was shooting for dance tracks. Yeah, that's going to be a theme. Um, mm. I, I'm not a, a dance music aficionado. So like a seven minute, like just beat, beat, beat song to listen to by yourself with your headphones on is kind of grueling. All told, I don't love this record, but it was better than I expected. Yeah, it didn't suck. Well, the record hits 200 on the Billboard 200. <laughs> so she, she was a Billboard 200 charting artist. We've never seen that before, where we had someone literally hit 200. Sneaking right in there. But know? someone's got to do it. Yeah. Borderline and Lucky Star each crack the top 10 on the Hot 100. At the end of the year, Madonna is cast as a club singer in the Harold Beckard film, Vision Quest. Vision Quest. Have it's, you seen the movie? I have. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I, I wrestled growing up. This, 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 this was depicting my life. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movie about a high school wrestler who, uh, who cuts weight to, to wrestle his, uh, his greatest rival. And um, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it is a horrible depiction of high school wrestling. It's, mm. uh, but, uh, you know, Matthew Modine, I'm going to give it to Modine. He really went for it, you know? So at what juncture does Madonna wrestle Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> Did you ever get cauliflower ear? Uh, I did not because uh, nobody dare come at my ears. She records two songs for the Vision Quest <laughs> soundtrack, uh, which sounds like it was better than the movie. I haven't seen in the film. It's okay. I'm, I'm being harsh. Crazy for you and The Gambler. Crazy for you goes to number one on the Billboard Hot yeah, 100. Yeah, because it's a banger. <laughs> sure, but it's just wild. That's just like I have an album that's number two hundred, but it's the number one song uh. in America for this weird wrestling movie. In 1984, Madonna plays live on massive television programs in the U.S. and the U.K., like Top of the Pops, as well as American Bandstand. Back in Philadelphia. Top of the they were still doing American Bands in the 80s? Until the 90s, I wow. think. Yeah. Madonna's wardrobe was curated by Moroccan stylist Maripol. Uh, who was very much in the New York City art scene, along with Debbie Harry and Andy Warhol. Madonna's TV appearances brought Maripol's work to wider audiences and proved to be massively influential and left a massive impact on the fashion world of the 1980s and beyond. A year after her debut record and first charting number one song, Madonna puts out her second record entitled like a virgin if you're listening to this episode i expect this is where like 90 percent of the madonna songs you know come from yeah like a virgin. it was my favorite record of hers by far yeah. i love this record um i actually had a very unique experience with this record because i lost my notes um and had to re-listen to it um but i had already been listening to like later madonna so i had just listened to american life which <laughs> uh spoiler alert alert is a um pile of dog shit on top of a even bigger pile of dog shit on top of the biggest pile of dog shit you've ever seen. So after that, uh, like a virgin, which I had already remembered enjoying turned out to just, uh, it was like, it was so refreshing. Oh my God. I, my, my rating system for this album for each song was how many A's in the word yes that I wrote down while drinking margaritas on my outdoor sofa and, uh, and listening to, uh, like a virgin, this album rips. I gave it a, a seven, which for, Madonna for me is, is very Ooh. high. Uh, are you guys familiar with the scene from Reservoir Dogs? Which one? The one uh, where... Oh, at the, the opening scene, right? It's, it's, not, not, it's, it's, not the, it's near the scene. beginning. Yeah. The, the scene where he's talking about um, uh, Tarantino, because he likes talking about cool guy monologues, where he's and like feet. smoking a cigarette, and he's like, you know, Madonna songs about like a guy with a huge dong or whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> now, boys... <laughs> I'd like to go on the record and say I think Tarantino is wrong. I think it's a basic love song. I think that her going through the wilderness and she made it through and she didn't know how off she was until she found you. She never had sex for love before. I think we're all missing song. the homonym. She was wandering through the wilderness. She made it through. She didn't know how off she was until she found you. Hugh? A sheep. Um, I thought it was maybe Hugh. No, and then the sheep guided her back to civilization. The sheep's got a big That's even dog. Ew.
I was absolutely shocked that Dress You Up wasn't a hit. Dress You Up is amazing. I think it's a great song, yeah. and it I never heard it before. Me neither. I actually had never heard Burning Up before. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good driving song. Like a Virgin was a lead-off single and stayed at number one on the Hot 100 for six weeks straight. And you'll be surprised to know that in 1984 in Reagan's America, the conservatives did not like the song or the accompanying video. They said it was the work of the devil and tearing families apart and sought to have it banned on all airways. Was it literally tearing families apart? Like, did sure. somebody, like, like cite in their, in, in their divorce? Like, reason for divorce, like, fucking Madonna. You know I can't fucking, do it anymore. You know that fucking Madonna song? <laughs> Snowflakes. <laughs> she performs the song live in a wedding dress on the first MTV VMAs, Video Music Awards, in 1984. Back when it mattered, man. Yeah. B back when there were four videos up for <laughs> any award. Four videos to choose from. I love Material Girl. It goes to number two on the Hot 100. Material and I am a material now. Uh, she was filming the music video for the song when she first met Sean Penn, who she would marry on her 27th birthday the following year in 1985. Hot dog. No, he's an actor. No, he's a literal human <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> you seen milk? Like a Virgin, the album hits number one in seven countries, including the U.S. of A. Ronnie and Nancy were listening to it in the White House while they didn't address the AIDS crisis. And they sell over five million copies here alone in the U.S. of A. Uh, making Madonna the first woman to have that sort of success, it has since sold over 21 million copies around the globe. Yeah, because it rips. So, Dan, you did something interesting. You listened to all of Madonna's discography while uh, doing a household chore. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I did the dishes. And um, for those of you out there who don't have a PhD and maybe can't kind of figure this out, um, Madishes is a combination of the words Madonna and dishes. A portmanteau. What? A portmanteau. We talked about toes too much in this episode, you guys. <laughs> It quickly, um, after, I would say after this album, actually, it, it kind of occurred to me that um, listening to every Madonna album was going to be more of a chore than a joy. And um, so I just paired it up with another chore. Um, and that chore was the dishes. I don't like doing the dishes. And I, spoiler alert, didn't really enjoy listening to most of Madonna's discography. So... Did you stop doing dishes once you were done listening to Madonna? They yeah, I'm, been never, I'm literally never going to do the dishes ever again. They just pile. <laughs> No Madonna, even... no dishes. Madonna stars in the titular role of desperately seeking Susan. She's Susan. She records Into the Groove for this uh, film, which puts her at number one on the UK charts. The New York Times named it one of the best 10 films of the year. April, she strikes out on the Virgin Tour, her first tour ever, and the Beastie Boys are her opener. Wait, you said she strikes out? Would the, the pitcher throw a fastball? Oh, nice. Boom! Yeah, the Beastie Boys are her opener, and there's a great picture of uh, the Beastie Boys chasing her around with super soakers on stage. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Scores of people dressed up like her while seeing her in concert. They, by and large, did not get the Beastie Boys. <laughs> These teenage girls who were turned out for Madonna, you won't believe it, didn't, didn't like the clever wordplay and uh, abrasive flow of the Beastie Boys. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
While touring, Madonna puts out the singles Dress You Up and Angel. For those keeping score, all four of the singles from Like a Virgin break the top five on the Hot 100. Because they all rip. In the arms of this is like something we kind of accept today, you know, in an age of like Beyonce's and Taylor Swift's where it's like you're just going to have every number one spot every time you put a song out. But that was rare, especially for female artists in the 1980s and before, you know. Well, it's also in this year in 1985 that some asshole leaked her nude photos from when she was modeling for art students to Playboy and Penthouse, Yikes. who promptly published them against her will and her asking them not to do so. And shame on both of those publications for doing so. The original prints were sold for $100,000. Prince was on it too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While playing Live Aid at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, she quipped that she wanted to take her jacket off, but she wouldn't in case the media, quote, might hold it against me 10 years from now. Yeah, <laughs> That's pretty it. funny. Yeah. <laughs> in 1986, she was inspired by her husband, Sean Penn, to make another record, and she dedicates it to him. True Blue? Madonna's third record, True Blue, is dedicated to Sean Penn. <laughs> to me, this record felt very Michael Jackson inspired. Papa Don't Preach, to me, could be mm. Billie Jean, which came out four years prior. Yeah, except Billie Jean rips and pa Papa Don't Preach is a piece of shit. Is that your yummy no. yummy? Tell me that's not your yummy yummy. No, it's just harsh. People really like that song. Billie Jean's my love. She just As aforementioned, I was surprised at her first album being a bit um, tame. Uh, second album was edgy, right? And then this one, it felt like she was like trying to be like, I'm a true artist and I'm going to do high art now. You know, I've, mm. I've just like done like an album about like, hey, what if I like lost my virginity or whatever? And then this one is like, Papa, don't preach. Like, don't tell me not to get an abortion. Like, that's your high art. It's like a fake story so about an abortion. Saying- the record does go to number one in 28 countries this time, and it was her best-selling record of all time. Ugh. It's okay. I don't know. I don't know about you. What, what, what did you think? There, the... Yeah, I liked, I, you know, I like, I'll take Like a Virgin over this any day. Yeah. It's also coming out just a year after, you know, so I feel like she used up a lot of her good ideas already. She receives the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress for her performance in the film Shanghai Surprise. Golden Raspberry? Which she yeah, started in with Sean Penn. Yeah, the, the, the raspberries are like the worst <laughs> awards in film every year. What is the culture around that? Like, do actors like wear it like a badge of honor? Or, sometimes, sometimes yeah. people go and accept it. Yeah. Um, other people say, fuck you. Next time I see you, I set you up in a nice tie. Yeah, no, we still have it. Sean Penn. <laughs> see, you have quite a following, Mr. Wazy. Madonna. You deceitful, jelly spine, backstabbing bastard. <laughs> Shanghai Surprise. She also stars this year in the film and theatrical adaptation of David Rabe's work entitled Goose and Tom Tom. <laughs> I love that one. She's in so many movies. It's wild. 1987, Madonna records four songs and stars in the film Who's That Girl? She sets out on the Who's That Girl tour spanning the globe, or what she was able to get into in four months. Her show in Paris brought out 130,000 people, setting the record for the biggest crowd at a female headline concert. Nice. The record for the highest attended concert on record today belongs to Vasco Rossi, an Italian man who brought out over 220,000 people to Medina Park in northern Italy in 2017. That's wild to me. That's, we still haven't even cracked, you know, a quarter of a million people being in one place. Yeah. Yeah. I think that because that's just too many people. It's, it's far too many people. It's a lot of people. <laughs> yes, hi, hello, tis I from the future, calling in to say that on May 4th, 2024, just days after we recorded this episode, Madonna set the record for, quote, all-time most attended standalone concert for any artist performing for free 
with her final performance of the Celebration Tour in Rio de Janeiro, 1.6 million people were in attendance. Good, good job, Madonna. Hope, uh, hope you sold a couple t-shirts. Okay, bye. Madonna put out a remix album of her previous singles called You Can Dance, and it goes to number 14 on the Billboard 200. Bet your ass I can, Madonna. <laughs> I can't. Well, it's also in this year, 1987, the year after True Blue comes out, which was dedicated to Sean Penn, that she files to divorce Sean Penn. <laughs> like, she's truly blue, but she has to divorce him. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a sad album. But she ends the process just a couple weeks after filing for divorce. Madonna takes to the Great White Way in 1988. She's on Broadway in Speed the Plow. She's in so much obscure stuff. Yeah. Uh, It seems to be about uh, Hollywood and show business. (laughs) She's in the show from May until August of 1988. How are the reviews? Not charitable. Madonna and Sean Penn go to their house in Malibu to ring in the new year. You know, see 1989 in Malibu? Well, Madonna files a report of assault against Sean Penn, alleging that she was, quote, beaten, gagged, and left strapped to an armchair for nine hours before she escaped, unquote. After meeting with her lawyers, she drops all criminal charges. Holy guacamole. Um, Five days after this, in 1989, the new year, the pair put in their paperwork to divorce. In 2015, Madonna, looking back, tells Us Weekly, quote, I did a show at Madison Square Garden the other night, and my ex-husband was there. Could you imagine? He had been at my show 30 years earlier when I was at Madison Square Garden, and he was very upset with me for wearing a costume that was too revealing. Anyway, after that show, he wrote me a letter and said he finally appreciates my art, and that is what I have to say about marriage. Okay? Unquote. She, she tells you this every week? She, every week she, she calls us. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, fuck Sean Penn? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did not know that story, and um, I'm not going to watch Milk again. Sure. 1989, Madonna enters a collaboration with Pepsi. So what happens is Pepsi and Madonna make a commercial that is to air, and it gets banned. That commercial airs 34 years later in 2023. Really? (laughs) Yeah, during the 2023 MTV VMAs. Pepsi's like, we found our balls. (laughs) Well, going back to the religious themes, uh, Madonna puts out her fourth record, Like a Prayer. Yeah, she's putting out an album basically every year. The video for the title track, Like a Prayer, depicts various Catholic iconography and a scene in which Madonna enters sexual congress with a saint. You won't believe this. The Vatican was abhorred and absolutely slanders this music video because the Vatican had nothing else to worry about. They, they got nothing going on. Conservatives slam Madonna and boycott Pepsi. Physically? Yes. God. <laughs> and Pepsi yeah. then cancels the deal altogether. Uh-huh. uh-huh. The song becomes her seventh number one on the Hot 100 out of like seven <laughs> songs that she puts out there. Mm-hmm. So this record, let's talk about it. There's 11 songs. It's her longest record to date, you know, as of 1989. And I wouldn't date it. You didn't like it? Uh, I was very disappointed how, by how much I did not like this. I, I, I really like the song Like a Prayer. It's, it's definitely one of those songs that, you know, flipping through the stations and you hear it and you go, yeah, I can jam out to Like a Prayer for the 10,000th time. Yeah. Um, I, th- I thought the whole album would be cleverly provocative like that song is and fun to jive to and uh that was not the case friends uh most of it was very contrived um all my notes contain the word corny um there are 
some real lowlights, um, an act of contrition, uh, the first but not the last uh, Madonna song where she just recites a prayer over edgy music. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, I was a little confused with this record. I prayed for the whole thing. I thought that was like kind of the thing you had to do. Oh my God. So you said this is where Madonna starts getting really cheesy, right? For me, yeah. If you'll also follow the career of another massive artist of the 1980s, this is around when he starts getting very cheesy. Let me tell you who the producers are on this record. Uh huh. You got Madonna. Uh huh. Patrick Ray Leonard, My just dad. a producer. Her ex boyfriend Stephen Bray, who she was squatting in the synagogue with. Bray, the sound a zebra makes. And Prince. Uh huh. And this is where Prince starts getting <laughs> horridly cheesy. <laughs> and in fact, the song "Love Song." I was like, wow, she got someone who sounds just like Prince. It's Prince. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and an act of contrition sounds exactly like something Prince told her. Like, you should do that. Yeah, That'll you should cool. do like a real edgy. Like, He's act. the one who does the whole uh, Our Father in the middle of one of his songs. I'm not, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I love Prince. I love some Prince. She's so This record hits number one on the Billboard 200 and sells over 15 million copies. <laughs> so what do we know? Um, Madonna was named... I'll, Art- t- I'll tell you what we know. We know that a lot of people listened to it once and then just stuffed it into a corner and forgot about <laughs> it for a long time. Madonna was named Artist of the Decade by Musician and Billboard magazines as well as MTV. Uh-huh. Of the 80s. They said it was her. So we're now in a new decade. And Madonna's got to prove herself. She assumes the role of Breathless Mahoney alongside Warren Beatty in the film adaptation of Dick Tracy. I bet that was great. They start dating. (laughs) Dick Tracy? Well, the the actor who portrays him, Warren Beatty, who is 20 years Madonna senior. Hey, man, age is just a number. So Madonna records an album to accompany Dick Tracy and serve as its soundtrack. It's entitled I'm Breathless. For which she records the songs I'm Breathless as well as Vogue. And it goes to number one in the USA. The film comes out and spends two weeks atop the U.S. box office. Madonna and Beatty break up almost immediately after the movie comes out. Because he's impotent. In the spring, Madonna takes her blonde ambition world tour to the road for the next five months. Rolling Stone loved it. Religious groups hated it and protested her concerts. They especially didn't like when two fellas would rub her body all over, and then she would pretend to masturbate on stage every single night of the tour. Madonna wins a Grammy for Best Long Form Music Video for videos from this tour. This tour also depicted her in the documentary Truth or Dare. It broke the record for the highest grossing documentary of all time, only eclipsed over a decade later by Bowling for Columbine. Yeah, was a, people gobble that shit up, yeah. don't they? Hey, well, look. not as much as they gobble up gun violence in schools. And bowling. <laughs> and bowling. It's, is that your takeaway what that movie's about? What else is it? What? <laughs> Good point. It is in the title. You're right. What? No, what? Is it? It's about the band Bowling for Soup. Mm-hmm. What does Columbine have to do with Bowling for Soup? They went to high school there. 
<laughs> where nothing bad ever happened. <laughs> Live in your little world, man. Madonna puts out the Immaculate Collection, her first greatest hits compilation. It will certainly not be her last. It's the best selling compilation album of all time by a solo artist. She sells 30 million copies. Wow. An additional track she made for, for her greatest hits. Uh, Justify My Love goes to number one in the U.S., her ninth number one song. And she starts dating a model named Tony Ward. Tony is her father, paging Dr. Freud. Tony Ward is her father? No, Wait, well, so no. He's, he's the musical thing, right? Tony Ward? Tony, <laughs> Tony Award, yes. Tony Award. Uh-huh. <sighs> Tony Ward Award. Illuminati. Confirmed. Tony Ward is in the music video for the song, Justify My Love. Is he dreamy? Which had all different sorts of sexual tension in it, uh, and it was banned from MTV for being too sexy. 92, alongside Gina Davis, Lori Petty, Rosie O'Donnell, and Tom Hanks, Madonna stars in the film A League of Their Own. Shout out to my moms. As May... Mordabido. When I've not seen this film, but anytime I hear it or think of it, I think of your mom. She loves that movie. She loves, loves it. it. It's a good movie. It's it's fun. It's a fun flick. Um, you know. Is um, Madonna good in it? She's not bad. Okay. Yeah, she's perfectly uh she's like not a major character, but she's you know, she's uh she's got a presence. It's the number one film at the box office when it comes out. She does the theme song, This Used to Be My Playground, which also goes to number one on the Billboard Hot 100, her 10th number one single, making her the female artist with the most number one singles at that time. She was beat by Mariah Carey, who had 19. She was also the first artist to have a number one song in four decades. Man, I can only name like four Mariah Carey songs. I, I can name two. I bet it's one of those things where if you heard more, you'd be like, wow, I do know that. Yeah. Uh, the Beatles still hold the record for the most number one songs with 20. Madonna starts an entertainment group called Maverick. This is affiliated with Time Warner. Cuban. <laughs> with Tom Cruise. With Time Warner, which gave her 600, I'm sorry, $60 million to get started with uh, for her work there. Just a little something, something yeah. to get you started. Can you know? get the Mark Cuban thing? Yes. The owner of Dallas Maverick. Uh-huh. Former. He's, he, he's out. He's out. He's out. He said, I'm, I can't do for it. The, for those reasons, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Well done. She secures 20% of all royalties of any music that she makes with this group, Maverick. Michael Jackson also received 20% of royalties from Sony. They were tied for the highest at that time. The two artists to get 20% of royalties from their labels. From them. Maverick would go on to produce records with Alanis Morissette and Michelle Branch. Madonna helps fund an exhibit for Jean-Michel Basquiat, igniting an old flame. Mm. At the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. Madonna also puts out her book, which is entitled Sex! Sex! Which is a lot of sexy phot- photographs by Vogue's Stephen Meisel and some writing from Madonna. No one seems to like this publicly, but at $50 a pop, it sells 1.5 million copies almost immediately. <laughs> cool. She can't lose. No. There was so much ire in the water that people didn't even seem to notice that she also put out a record at this time. Wow. Her also also called Sex. Got erotica. Close. I didn't even... I saw the title of this record and I skipped it. This is her lowest selling record ever. So I'd be I'm, surprised if most people who are listening to this ever heard anything off of it. And it's the only one since her debut to not have a single to get to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah. Erotica is 11 songs long, her her longest yet. <laughs> and uh, I didn't care for this. No. It was my least favorite album of all of her albums. It was one of a couple to get a one rating from me, but it was not my least favorite. Um, but I'm with you, man. It really stinks. My, my, my yuck, icky song is on this album. Where Life Begins? It is a song uh, beckoning cun- cunnilingus. Um uh-huh. Through the guise of saying, kiss me where life begins, as if I want to think oh. about 
you're like a baby, you know, in that scenario. It's like, why? Like, for why? Why is this a metaphor you want to use? I don't know why you're so grossed out by uteruses. Everyone has one. You know, yeah. I'm grossed out by the idea that Madonna wants to be like, I'm edgy and cool. No, what? It's not all bad. Uh, this album still goes to number two for Madonna. So she's perpetually failing upward. Even an album that no one knew was out still hits number two. Good for her. In 1993, she stars in the film Dangerous Game, which is a straight to film. I'm sorry, straight to a video movie, as well as Body of Evidence, a film about S&M. Critics, critics hated all of the above. She head out uh, on the Girly Show tour in 1993 in which she and a cadre of topless backing dancers went around the world, including a notable stop in Puerto Rico, where she straddled their flag and flossed it between her legs, which very much upset the crowd. Yeah, that's um, ill-advised. Each episode, we like to highlight the up-and-coming work of a discography-developing diva. Today, that is... Lorenzo Jones. Lorenzo Jones was the product of an all-girls Scottish boarding school where they invented the tabernacle. It is now time to need ya. I need ya. I need you right now. Yeah, I need you. So don't let me, don't let me, don't let me down with Lorenzo Jones and their track. Never gonna see this face again. Say I 
You can hear more from Lorenzo Jones. Listen to a playlist of our favorite Madonna songs. Visit our shop and social media pages. Contact us. View our citations. Please, please view our citations. And so much more by using the links in this episode's show notes. 1994. Madonna has flings with Dennis Rodman <laughs> and Tupac Shakur. Good for her. Tupac wrote her a letter breaking things off, saying that he would offend his fans by dating a white woman. It was actually a really earnest letter. You can actually see the contents of it. And he requests to speak to her in person so they could part on good terms. That's nice of Tupac. A gentleman. The rose in the sidewalk. Well, shortly after that, she goes on The Late Show with David Letterman, where she swears like a sailor. Then she gives Dave a pair of her panties and tells him to smell it during the show. <laughs> Critics decreed that her career was over. Jokes on that. Nope. <laughs> Little did they know that we were soon to enter an age where the more abhorrent you could be, the more popular you would be. Madonna ain't Madonna. She actually starts walking it back and toning things down. She records a ballad entitled I'll Remember for the soundtrack to the Brendan Fraser film, which she does not appear in, entitled With Honors. Uh, she also goes on Jay Leno's show where she is reserved. That sounds fun. Jay runs a tight ship. Yeah. How about hobbies? Do you have hobbies, things you like to do? I have a collection. Really? Of what? <laughs> <laughs> these are, oh, barrettes. Aren't those ah! nice? Here. Yeah, these, are, these are very personal that you brought from home. <laughs> those are two of my favorites. Yeah. I got them at an, um, a barrette auction in, uh, in Minnesota. <laughs> really? And, um... And you can have those if you'd like. Oh, the, the, well, this is very nice. You know, this is so shocking. This is... See, I always thought this was the real you, and I'm... <laughs> and this is where we get her sixth record, Bedtime Stories. It's also 11 tracks. It seems pretty in inspired by R&B. Lots of, like, Fuji's-esque sort of samples and stuff. I don't like it, but I can tell that she does. It seems like there's an honest effort here. Hey, at mm -hmm. least she, um, she stayed true to the title. Yeah. <laughs> oh, got her. Uh, yeah, I, I called this one Erotica Part 2 because in Erotica, she discovered the hip-hop dance beat. And in this one, she just kept it going, baby. She was like, hey, do you like that one drum beat? You want to hear it for a whole nother album? No, ma'am, I do not. The record hits three on the Billboard 200. So what do I know? We know. The single Take a Bow goes to number one on the Hot 100 for seven weeks, her longest stay there ever. She follows up Bedtime Stories with a compilation record that we won't mention called Something to Remember. It's a bunch of ballads. You just mentioned it. I think if we rewind the tape, you'll find that's not the case. 1996, Madonna flies south of the border. The Bolivian border, that is, as she is working on the film adaptation of Avita down Argentina Way. It's an Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice joint. She records a double album to serve as a soundtrack. Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, breaks charts all across Europe. And Madonna kept getting sick while filming that movie. It turns out she was preggers. Oh, yeah. She got kissed where life begins. With oh. a penis. <laughs> the father was Dennis Rodman. No, it was <laughs> Carlos Leon, her fitness trainer. Critics really liked the movie. They did not like the baby. <laughs> Give it two stars. Um, and they thought she was great in it. And she wins a Golden Globe for Best Actress for her troubles. She finally got recognized for her acting skills. Yeah. Wow, yeah. for her. By the Golden Globes, anyway. Yeah. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence. I kept my promise, don't keep your distance. Madonna's first child, Lords, 
Lola is what they call her. Maria Sicone Leon is born on October 14th. This is a massive turning point for Madonna for many reasons. Let's go over one. One of her many biographers, Mary Cross, said it best in her book, Madonna, a biography. Quote, now 38 years old, Madonna had at least triumphed on screen and achieved her dream of having a child, both in the same year. She had reached another turning point in her career, reinventing herself and her image with the public. Madonna and Carlos break up within seven months of their daughter's birth. <laughs> Madonna said they were better off as best friends. This is nice. Yeah. This is around the time that Madonna is introduced by Sandra Bernhard to Kabbalah a form of Jewish mysticism, which focuses on the unchanging elements of life, a.k.a. God, and the changing elements, a.k.a. mortality. She kind of becomes like half Jewish here. Okay. Madonna then meets director Guy Ritchie, who directed the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. Not at that point. No. As well as the live action Aladdin and Snatch. Jesus. I thought you were listing his like worst movies. And, and <laughs> well, these are the ones people know. Uh, and they hit it off and start a romance. I didn't know that. I know she did. I did not know that either. Madonna works with William Orbit, producer for Blur, Pink, Robbie Williams, Woo! Britney Spears, and Chris Brown. Uh, the Blur actually makes more sense to me than those other artists on her upcoming particular record. Number seven, Ray of Light. This album is home to my yummy yummy track. Same. Ray, Wait, of, Ray of Light. Uh, I think it's such an exciting and upbeat song. I think her falsetto works great with it. To me, it's like her most powerful song, I think. It's not just catchy, sort of like pop music. To me, this is like a really powerful, hard-hitting song. I what, love it. What, um, what about it really like makes you it feel It sounds so big. Mm-hmm. Like it is just this gargantuan sounding thing with those dance beats. Like it's got the dance rave kind of sure, groove pop. to it. I think she sounds awesome. There's kind of like five different melodies throughout the song and they're all hooks. Like they're all veritable, really cool hooks. Which in back catalog Madonna, um, man, she, she really starts to kick the hook to the curb a yeah. little bit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a... She put them all on Ray of Light. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just love the song so much. As for the record, for me, uh, it starts off. I'm like, wow, this is Madonna with some maturity and substance. And that just becomes ravey trances. Uh, yes. And uh, some potentially offensive sort of uh, shanty, ashtangi uh, impersonations here. <laughs> Besides that... This is my favorite record of Madonna, so I gave it a 4.5. Wow. Okay. Which is, which is high yeah. for a Madonna record. What did you like about um, it? It just seemed like the most different thing she did, and I think I mm. liked it because I was just getting so bored. You know what I mean? And this was like, felt different. I th- it was like the most like outgoing. Um, it's home to my yummy yummy, to have and not to hold. Oh. Okay. Um, I just... Thought it was a really great song. I just really liked it. Which part did you like more, the having or the not holding? Not holding. Yeah. The album racks up four Grammys. It's nominated for Record of the Year. See? That, what would you guess it loses to? 1998? 98. Uh, Third Eye Blind. No. Uh. <laughs> Let's say it corresponds with a film. A film? Big 98 film. Give me a hint. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. A Canadian. Uh, Drake. Alex Trebek. My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. I... Madonna starts the Ray of Light Foundation. 
which seeks to, quote, promote peace, equal rights, and education for all. That sounds nice. Yeah. I donated $50,000 to this. Whoa. Yeah. And for yeah. that reason, I'm out. Indeed. <laughs> For I also did get fifteen percent equity. So oh wow! Nice. In the charity? In Madonna. Oh whoa! Wow. So you, do you own like her like leg from the strip from the knee down? Kneecap down. Uh, that organization is based in L.A. And Melanie Saccone, Madonna's youngest immediate full sister, serves as the group's trustee. Nice. Madonna funds the organization by herself, so you donating $50,000 is not that unheard of. So far, what they have done is helped raise teachers' salaries in, like, targeted areas. They've helped fund the development and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine, kind of like Dolly Parton. And they provide enhanced technological supplies to schools, and in conjunction with Build On, they built Molly's first secondary school. They're also partnered with the National LGBTQ Task Force in an effort to expand on, quote, violence prevention work, especially as it affects transgender women of color. 1999, the year The Matrix comes out. This naturally leads us to the soundtrack to Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, for which she wrote the song Beautiful Stranger, getting her another Grammy Award for the best song written for a motion picture. Two thousand. Speaking of motion pictures, she stars in one in two thousand alongside Rupert Everett, entitled "The Next Best Thing." <laughs> and funny enough, it opens at number two in the box office. Nice. <laughs> I have no recollection of this movie. No, I, mean, I have literally, aside from a league of their own, which I am aware of primarily because of my um, upbringing. Mm. I have not known a single visual arts piece of hers that you have uh, in so many yeah so many it's astounding baseball, right baseball as i just brought up number two yeah. she has her second child this one is with guy ritchie one rocco john ritchie rocco was born in los angeles on august 11th madonna suffered from placenta previa which is when your babe's placenta attaches near the cervical opening, which can cause bleeding for the mother, as well as fetal growth restriction. I did not think we'd be talking about the female reproductive no. system so much this episode. Goes they both seem to be okay, and they have that baby christened in Scotland on December 21st. So just a few months after it comes out. Uh, and Richie and Madonna married the very next day. She gets to working with Marwe Osmadi. A French producer, Marwe Amadzi, a French producer, and I'm totally sure I'm saying that wrong. He has worked with Retro Future, Fisher Spooner, and done songs for Snatch and Die Another Day, among others. I would call him quite accomplished. Madonna quipped, quote, I love to work with the weirdos that no one knows about after their time <laughs> together. I'm sure he felt real good about that. He did a James Bond movie, and she's like, "This weirdo, oh, he's obscure." <laughs> and that's where we get number eight, music. Uh huh. I felt this start as a dance record, and then becomes a singer songwriter. I <laughs> literally have the exact same thing. I'm like, this starts pretty strong. The first couple songs are like fun little like techno pop like dance songs, and then the rest is just like boring acoustic guitar music. Yeah. 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 She's hitting the auto-tune hardcore on the track Nobody's yeah. Perfect. It should be noted that Cher's Believe came out just two years before this, which was the birth of auto-tune. I feel so sad What I did wasn't right I feel so bad And I must say to you Supposed to do Sit around and wait for you 
feels like for a girl had a music video that was banned by MTV because it showed Madonna committing crimes, including hot wiring a car <laughs> with the word pussy on the front license plate, crashing it, tasing a man at an ATM, stealing his money, winking at a car full of cute boys, hitting a police officer's car, pulling a gun on them, stealing another car, blowing up a gas station, having a messy end table in her hotel room, and crashing another car, all while her grandmother was along with her for the ride. <laughs> What it feels like for a girl and music were critical and commercial massive successes. The album goes to number one in 20 countries, including the USA. Her first number one here since Like a Prayer. So, so music, uh, if I recall, is it that the, the one with the uh, music video where she's got like a cowboy hat and she's like riding in the back of like limousines? Yep. So I, I distinctly remember as a kid watching The Box. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it was like regular viewing in my house was music videos over and over again. And that one came on. And my mom saw it and was like, that woman is my age. Why is she doing that? <laughs> uh, the big twist in that music video was that Ollie G is the driver of the limo. Oh, really? At one point, she like taps on the window and she puts out the divider goes down and it's Ollie G. <laughs> Uh, in 2001, Madonna hits the road again for the first time in almost a decade. This is her Drowned World Tour, 47 sold-out shows. She couples this with the release of GHV2, Greatest Hits Volume 2, mm -hmm. her next Greatest Hits Volume, uh, and that goes to 7 on the Billboard 200. 2002, Guy Ritchie directs Madonna in Swept Away, a direct-to-video film that everyone seemed to hate. <laughs> This was followed up by Treading the Boards in Little London Town in a production of a play called Up for Grabs. She, no, hell. she is on the bill as Madonna Ritchie. Mm. Mm. Well, this too was panned to hell and back. <laughs> she does the Bond song for Die Another Day. It's the same name. Uh, the her worst so James Bond movie. Her song is nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Original Song, as well as a Golden Raspberry for Worst Original Song. Get uh, it together, industry. You know, do you like it or not? She wins neither, which somehow feels more insulting. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of the road. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian described her cameo in the film as incredibly wooden. <laughs> not something you want to be described as unless your name's Pinocchio. <laughs> oh, I, I, he wanted to be a boy, though. Yeah, but he was wooden. You wouldn't want to be called. You're right. Incredibly You're wooden. You're so right. She takes another stab at this whole music thing with her ninth record, American Life. Madonna described the album as, quote, like a trip down memory lane, looking back at everything I've accomplished and all the things I once valued and all the things that were important to me. I think this album has all of her worst tendencies in one place. It's overproduced. It's got terrible lyrics, completely bastardizing her voice. She has a good voice. She can sing. I don't know why you're going to mess with it this much. Yep. It kind of sounds like bad karaoke. There's really nothing catchy here. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, my, my most notable note here is uh, the term open mic lyrics. Um, you know, when you go yeah. to an open mic night and like, you know, everyone's, you know, it's like we're, we're all part of a team here. We're all trying to try and try our stuff out. And like this very sad person comes up to the microphone and you want to support them. But then they just start talking really sadly about like, nobody knows me. And everyone just puckers up in the room and you all just go like this. <laughs> And like you're covering all, your nipples, you're, you're very <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> and you want to clap and you want to egg this person on. But they're just singing these really flat, terrible songs about how no one knows them. That's what this album is. Yeah, I'd like to focus on the lyrics thing. Um, I'm drinking a soy latte. I get a double shot. It goes right through my body and you know I'm satisfied. I drive a Mini Cooper and I'm feeling super duper. Yo, they tell I'm a trooper and you know I'm satisfied. I do yoga and Pilates and the room is full of hotties. So I'm checking out the bodies, and you know I'm satisfied. 
I'm digging on the estopes. This metaphysics S word is dope. And if all this can give me hope, you know I'm satisfied. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Your quote to start the description of this album was that this was like her going on a trip down memory lane and it's really personal and stuff. And it's like, oh, lady, I'm not buying it. You know, like I'm just, I'm not buying any of this. You were driving a Mini Cooper in 1985. She's Um, checking out the hotties. Well, you got to check out the hotties. She's checking out the bodies, doing yoga and Pilates. This album, quote, only sells 4 million copies, uh, but that's her worst up to this point. In August of 2003, the Smooch Fest of Alt 3 breaks out at the MTV Video Music Awards between her, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera as they perform the song Hollywood together. Mm. Oh, Hollywood, the song that rhymes Hollywood with Hollywood? Yeah. Love that one. Almost immediately following this, she enters a contract with the Callaway Arts and Entertainment for a five book deal. They're children's books. Her first outing was basically Mean Girls, but British. 2004, Madonna sues the Warner Music Group as well as Time Warner because she said that they had actively lost millions of dollars that should have gone to her company, Maverick, due to their poor organization and faulty business practices. They sue her right back, claiming that Maverick lost millions of dollars due due to its poor organization and faulty business practices. This all smooths over when Warner buys Maverick out. Madonna still has a recording contract with Warner today. Madonna takes to the road with the reinvention world tour. This is depicted in the documentary. I'm going to tell you a secret. Tell me. That's the name. No, tell me. The UK Music Hall of Fame is created. Madonna is one of the first five inductees alongside the Beatles and then other Brits such as Elvis Presley, Bob Marley, and somehow you (laughs) too. 2005, Madonna plays Live 8 in London in July. It should be noted there were multiple Live 8s right here in the States. Couldn't be bothered to come here. Well, this brings us to her 10th record, Confessions on a Dance Floor. I said she is back the fuck on top with Hung Up. That felt like classic Madonna and catchiness to me. I think that's such a fun song. samples ABBA's Gimme 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 A Man After Midnight on Hung Up as well Uh, and the song goes to number one in 41 countries I love this song (laughs) but the rest of it (laughs) I thought there were a couple with some decent hooks like uh, like American Life I don't think had a single hook on it that I could remember what about Uh, the one about the Pilates (laughs) that was a rap but yes that's pretty good um but no, um, sorry. I thought uh, after the really lame uh, sorry in multiple languages, I thought the song actually was kind of catchy. Je suis désolé. Lo siento. Ik ben trovic. Sono spiacente. My official feeling about the album is I could dance to the whole thing if I had to, but I wouldn't be thrilled about it. Yeah, I would still say it's one of her best yeah. in a long time. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a it's an almost return to form. It's like it's almost there. 
does the early 2000s thing where she starts bringing Indian percussion onto it. You can hear that on the song. Oh, she's a real trend follower. I do like that her song Jump is followed by the song How High. That's pretty cute. It's like uh, that um, John Lennon uh, Imagine. It's like, uh, how do you sleep at night? And the next one is How. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And then the next song after uh, How High was like Six Feet, right? (laughs) (laughs) Hell of a jump. This album goes to number one in 40 countries. Wow. Which is like a fifth of the world's countries. Critics loved it. According to Billboard's Keith Caulfield, he said it's, quote, a welcome return to form for the Queen of Pop. Wins Best Electronic Slash Dance Album at the Grammys. She then goes again on tour with a Confessions Tour. The Russian Orthodox Church, as well as the Federation of Jewish Communities of Russia, instruct her fans to boycott the shows as it made allusions to Christianity. This is where they decided that Madonna yeah. is too anti-Christian. Uh, it becomes the highest grossing tour by a female artist with 1.2 million in attendance during its run. 2006, Madonna adopts her third child, David Banda, who she met while traveling to an orphanage in Malawi that she helped fund through her organization, Raising Malawi, which she started. This upset a lot of people because Malawi requires that prospective parents live in the country for a year before the adoption is processed. You won't be able to guess who didn't do that. (laughs) Madonna takes to Oprah to defend her actions, which she justified saying that this particular law doesn't say anything about foreign adoptions, loophole city, baby, and that her son was sick with pneumonia and required urgent medical treatment, which she could not really enable without being his legal guardian. This was on Oprah? Yeah. Everyone, if you look behind uh, under your, your chair, seats, there's a there's Malawian a... child. <laughs> uh, Banda's biological father has come forward and said that this was what was best for Banda. Uh, but the adoption is not official until 2008. So it takes about two years. In 2007, Warner Brothers and Madonna split ways. She immediately enters a contract with Live Nation, a.k.a. the devil, for the next 10 years uh, for $120 million. Devil pays. Yeah. 2008, Madonna makes a documentary with her gardener, Nathan Rissman, called I Am Because We Are. It's about Malawi and the issues the country is enduring and its history. Not a ton of information about it out there. The Guardian thought it was good. While we're on the subject of films, she also directs a British comedy called Fifth and Wisdom. Harry Potter. Which I had a whale of a time locating, but ultimately found it on iTunes for rental. Did you rent it? No. No. It was $23. Yeah. The Daily Telegraph said it was fine, but that she should, quote, hang on to her day job. It, Joke's on them. She performs at night. That's true. <laughs> Idiot. Story of my life. <laughs> Story of an artist. In March of 2008, <laughs> during her first year of being eligible to do so, Madonna was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame alongside the Stooges, who are also from Michigan. She doesn't perform and instead asks the Stooges to play two of her songs, Ray of Light and Burning Up. It's not good. <laughs> I really, I mean, the band is good on Ray of Light, but Iggy trying to, he's, he's doing it like three octaves lower than her and uh-huh. it just doesn't have any energy to it. Uh, it's a shame they didn't just change the key. Madonna releases the largely autobiographical album Hard Candy. Candy she, Shop is my yuck icky song. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this whole album, Candy Shop and Hard Candy as well, um, they all just mainly, like, they make me feel like they're, she's cashing in on, like, the My Humps era, you know? I could take you to the candy yeah. shop. Yeah, and it shows it's with so who she gets on this record, because it features the likes of Timbaland, Justin Timberlake, and Kanye West. Wait, and she got the land and the lake? Yeah. Wait, oh, man. It, it felt like the inclusion of other famous people was more of, like, a desperate grasp for, like, attention than, like, a real, to make it better. A real artistic <laughs> collaboration of any kind. It's the number one record in almost 40 countries, including the USA. Doesn't that just chap your ass? Her single Four Minutes goes to three on the Billboard Hot 100, breaking Elvis's record of the most top 10 hits on that chart. She has 37. Thanks. There are some familial issues this year. Madonna and Guy Ritchie divorce. You know, a little bit of a familial issue. Uh -huh. He gets somewhere in the neighborhood of $70 million out of it and joint custody, splitting their children's time between London and New York City. Oh. Yeah. I. Mm. Yeah, we'll talk mm. about that later. Okay. Yeah. Her brother, Christopher Saccone, writes and publishes a book without consulting her entitled Life with My Sister Madonna. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's good? Yeah, you know, he's got he's, he's to make a buck, too. You know? <laughs> What's he going to keep he showing up ask. at her doorstep being like, hey, Madonna, can you give me some bucks? <laughs> no, he's going to make his own bucks. You know? Well, she does not like this. Um, 2009, Madonna attempts to adopt another child from Malawi named Shafundo James. Malawi says no this time for the same mm -hmm. reasons as before, even though she was successful back then. The Supreme Court of Malawi allows the adoption of the child just a month later when she appeals again. The babe is called Mercy by Madonna. Her third greatest hits album comes out, Celebration, which features the titular track, which is new, and it hits number one all, all over the place. I remember Celebration coming out, that being a big deal. This is a year where she delivers a speech at the VMAs to the newly dead Michael Jackson. It's kind of wild to me, but Madonna was the best-selling solo artist of the 2000s. I don't think of her as a 2000s artist. I knew none of this music until <laughs> I listened to it for this exercise, and none of it resonated with me. Sure. 2010, Madonna puts out two different fashion lines. Material Girl, which carries clothing akin to what she was wearing when she first took off. And the second, Truth or Dare, which seems to be a higher-end, more provocative sort of outfit. Her daughter, Lourdes, designed the Material Girl line with her. Uh, she also starts up a line of fitness centers called Hard Candy Fitness. 2011, always keeping them guessing. Madonna directs another movie called W.E., which depicts the romance between King Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson, <laughs> which was scandalous because she was divorced. Everyone hated it, uh, but the Golden Globes liked her song Masterpiece, which they awarded her uh, best original song that year Man, for. That's just Jedi mind tricks. They thought it was good because this is the name. When the world did not end, the New York Giants and the New England Patriots football teams play each other in Super Bowl 46. And Madonna played with CeeLo Green, LMFAO, <laughs> Nicki oh. Minaj, MIA on a stage that was created by Cirque du Soleil. That's beautiful. That's actually beautiful. It was the most viewed halftime show up to that point with 114 million viewers, which was more people than were watching the game. Wow. I know that sounds like a joke. That's true. <laughs> 
you may have noticed throughout this uh, this conversation that I've been referring to her as Madonna, mm-hmm. and uh, that is because uh, if memory serves correctly, the announcer introducing her for the halftime show went, "Ladies and gentlemen, Madonna!" Madonna. And I just laughed so hard, and I've always called her Madonna ever since. <laughs> I think this is the perfect segue into my sports segment. Please do. And we're back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, NFL draft just occurred. Who went number one? Tell them. Kylie Caleb. Irving. Caleb Williams. The, the Chicago... The bear. Bears. The Bears. Yeah, Bear. Um, NBA NBA playoffs. They're here. They're happening. Sure are you can't stop them? Can't you can't stop them? You shan't. Well, actually, the um, time clock, the four quarters, eventually will stop them. And that's all the time we have for sports. <laughs> Speaking of Madonna. Madonna's 12th album, MDNA, which I guess you could pronounce as Madonna, comes out. No, it's more like MDNA. Mm, DNA. <laughs> uh, this is Madonna's Lady Gaga record, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it has some promise from the outset. Uh, I like to, I'm addicted. Turn up the radio was fine. I think I listened to this one out of sequence because there are two versions on Spotify. One that is a deluxe edition and one that is like the nightclub something edition. And I didn't know which one to listen to. And then I went back and forth Mm. until I listened to all the songs. Mm. Uh, So I don't know how it starts. Got it. Is my story there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, my notes are, please, Madonna, stop sucking so bad. Um, and the reason I, my, I, my ears perked up when you mentioned the guy Richie got $70 million in that divorce is from the song Love Spent. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, was uh, clearly about about losing money in a divorce. Just a little $70 million. Yeah, just a little something, Some uh, I, I would like to actually bring back the lyrics segment, for, if you will. Just, just, just a little something, something. Um, this is the one lyric I wrote down in all this time, which was, frankly... If my name was Benjamin, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. Hmm. It's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I think on the track, Give Me All of Your Lovin', she makes really good use of Nicki Minaj and M.I.A. I agree. Uh, I was, I was surprised because her previous collaborations were bad. Uh, <laughs> my, my, uh, my note on this one is the spelling at the beginning scared me. Um, mm. Madonna, and then um, L U V I N. Yeah, no, not good. Um, and then uh, actually, it ended up being kind of fun. It had good energy, yep. and I, I like I liked the raps at the end. This is her fifth number one album in a row on the Billboard 200. She goes out on an 88 sold out show tour, the MDNA tour. 2013, she gets into a bit of a kerfuffle with the country of Malawi. Man, she she can't get it right with Malawi. (laughs) Madonna visits the 10 schools uh, her organization's Raising Malawi has constructed. And the president of Malawi, Joyce Banda, delivered a speech saying that Madonna was misrepresenting how much Raising Malawi did with these schools. Uh, The president shortly thereafter walked it back, saying that her press team wrote the speech, not her. Wow. (laughs) Way to throw them under the bus. Yep. 2015, every demo track from Madonna's upcoming release leaked onto the internet. It's probably not a coincidence that this is her most collaborative record. Again, bringing Kanye West back into the fold, as well as Diplo and Avicii. Dead! 
This is Madonna's lucky number 13th record, Rebel Heart. Most of this record is just standard pop. It's not particularly abrasive or annoying, I didn't think. It's uh, more trend chasing. I feel like it, from the 2000s on, it's just kind of like she sounds vaguely like everything else that's going on in pop music in a yeah. way that is so boring. Sure. Hold Tight feels like a song absolutely made at this time period yep. for the top 40s charts. Um, I had an interesting experience listening to this one, so... Um, I had I was binging Madonna for a couple of days, you know, trying to trying to catch up for this. And uh, I listened to like two and a half albums straight and I got through this one and then I took a break and I went to run an errand and I got in the car and, um, you know, everybody's talking by Harry Nilsson came on and I was like, that's a song. You know, that's how you write a song. And then and then um, Sarah Smile came on and I was like, these are these are songs. This is how you write a song. Madonna, take notes. Like these, like, it's like she forgot how to write a song in 1989 and then never wrote one ever again. You know what I mean? Like her songs are just like, they're just like two notes. It's mm. like two notes. She sings a two note melody and yeah. it's like, Hey, now let the producer do the rest. And again, she's someone who can sing. Yeah, I know. She can sing very she's well. She's got great pipes. I love her voice. Come on, Madonna. Yeah. Hold tight. Everything's gonna be all right. Uh, the critics love this album. That's because the critics are fools. <laughs> Madonna promotes the album around the globe, including her first trip to Australia and over two decades. Crikey! While she's touring England, her son Rocco says he wants to stay there with Guy Ritchie instead of following her on tour anymore. How, how old's the kid? I think he was like a, almost a teenager. Yeah, he doesn't want to go on tour. Yeah, yeah. It sounds awful for a kid. An international legal battle opens up, but after some time, Rocco's parents figure it out outside of court and figure out how to split the time together. So he will continue going on tour sometimes. Not that following a movie director around is a real um, stable childhood sure. scenario sure. either. Uh, 2016, the year 45, Donnie with the dump truck gets elected into office. Um, in the fall, just before that happened, Madonna is named Billboard's Woman of the Year. I don't know why. Like, we, nothing really was happening for her in 2016. She hadn't released a record or done a film? Nope. Or they just, they're just feeling real Make good you remember her. Yeah. She's, she's the woman this year. Uh, she also plays in Washington Square Park in support of Hillary Clinton, who might seem to be a higher uh, prioritized candidate for Woman of the Year in 2016. She was busy. Yeah. And she was a supporter of Hillary Clinton, obviously, as you could glean from that. Madonna spoke out at the Women's March on Washington on January 21st, 2017, the day after Trump's inauguration, where she said she had, quote, thought a lot about blowing up the White House, unquote. <laughs> Not the best choice of words. She then said that this statement was, quote, taken wildly out of context, unquote, just like I'm doing right now. <laughs> was there more context? <laughs> no, <laughs> No, she said she said that she's been thinking about blowing up the White House. And then she was like, you know, she listed a bunch of things that were pissing her off. And then she said that uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, in 2017, the Queen of Pop adds two more children to her family. Uh, baby girls Astir and Stella were adopted from Malawi. They were four at the time. Her Raising Malawi charity builds the Mercy James Institute for Pediatric Surgery and Intensive Care in the country. She releases her MDNA skin makeup and skincare line in stores across USA. These are all similar things. Uh, and they, the family moves immediately to Lisbon, Portugal. You've been. I have. It's a lovely city. Madonna meets a chap named Dino de Santiago, who first exposes her to the music and musicians of the country of Portugal and gets her into mamba, morna, fado music. She got to playing in various, quote, living room sessions. And this is what gave her fodder for her next record. Fado fodder? <laughs> well done. Yeah. Number 14, Madam X. I actually didn't hate this one. Yeah, it was produced by a bunch of musicians like uh, Mira Weiss, a Swiss dance producer, and Mike Dean, mm. who worked with uh, The Weeknd and Kanye, and by herself. 
Which it's it's been a minute since she produced one of her own records. Um, I don't know about you. Come Alive stood out to me on this one. That was mm. the first legitimately catchy song in a long time, I felt like. Okay. Yeah, she was going for something. I'm not sure what it was, but she went for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think Madonna is associated with the populist control? <laughs> what? Why do you say that? I don't know. Oh. Just a thought. Well, that never occurred Just to me. Just a thought. This is her ninth number one Billboard 200 album. Critics really liked it again. NME called it, quote, bold, bizarre, self-referential, and unlike anything Madonna has ever done before. I think that's right. Yeah. After a year of shutdowns and rebrandings, the last of Madonna's hard candy fitness goes out of business in Santiago, Chile. (laughs) Madonna performs not as a contestant at Eurovision, uh, but just as as a performer, which was held in Tel Aviv that year. The Madame X tour begins. You were not allowed to use your phone at the shows. She starts dating one of her dancers. Amalik Williams. The uh, tour runs from September of 2019 until she hurts her knee and cancels the rest of the tour on March 8th, 2020. She gets the Rona shortly thereafter and hey, donates. We all did, lady. You know, we all did. Donates a million bucks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to aid them in the quest of installing 5G in our bodies, which Dr. Fauci personally injected into each and every one of us. Didn't know she was a snowflake. In 2020. Wait, I have 5G in my body? Yeah. What the hell am I paying at and for? Well, that's how they get you. In 2020, Madonna begins working on a movie about herself. She was supposed to direct it. As you can imagine, this all gets canceled in 2020. Julia Garner was to play Madonna. She played Ruth Langmore in Ozark. Instead, we get another documentary tour movie from this tour. Uh, it came out on Paramount Plus, so I definitely didn't see it. Who's seeing all of these these like behind like document? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like why? I think you get one. You get one tour movie. Yeah, I guess. Twenty twenty two. Madonna goes back to Warner Brothers after they gave her hundreds of millions of dollars to leave, uh, giving the label full rights to her entire catalog, which has led to a billion reissues and a remix called uh, "Finally Enough Love." Fifty number ones. Twenty twenty three. Well, this is where. You tell me you want to do Madonna for the show. Uh Uh-huh. It's now 2024. Uh Uh-huh. And almost immediately after you telling me this, Uh that you want to do Madonna for the show. Oh, jeez. On June 24th, Madonna was discovered unconscious in her apartment in New York City. She was rushed to the hospital and intubated in the ICU. It turns out she had a, quote, serious bacterial infection. I want to go on the record. I had nothing to do with this. Mm. Before Madonna was torn apart by that bacterial infection, she was torn apart by everyone after appearing at the 65th Grammys for her appearance because she's had plastic surgery and stuff. And she's people, allowed. People don't like that. Why not? On Because people are assholes. On Instagram, Madonna wrote that, quote, Once again, I'm caught in the glare of ageism and misogyny that permeates the world we live in. A world that refuses to celebrate women past the age of 45 and feels the need to punish her if she continues to be strong-willed, hardworking, and adventurous. I'm not sure that plastic surgery sums up those virtues necessarily, but you're allowed to do it. You know? Sure. Also, I think generous of her to say that the industry still cares about women up to the age of 45. <laughs> I think a lot, of, I, I heard the other day, it's 22. Once you're not 22 anymore, you're dead. Yeah. Like we on this program have been ripping Madonna a new one <laughs> on her songwriting, you know? Sure. Because, you know, she has control over that, you mm-hmm. know? But like, why? 
We're all going to age. We're all going to get old. We're all going to get a little Botox. Wr- wrinkles are just. We're all going to get some yeah. implants in our bubs. Yeah. And our glutes and our rumps. Yeah, I'm saving up. Come on. Yeah. Get with it. Yeah. Madonna does go on tour. It's called the Celebration Tour. Her. Celebrate good times. It's just greatest hits. Um, her, it, it, uh, she has Bob the Drag Queen as her opener. This came through Philadelphia and it was very well received. People said it was fantastic. In June of 2023, Madonna uh, gets on the single Popular with The Weeknd and Playboy Cardi. I really like this song. I don't like Madonna's part. Well, Boring is like ever. But I hate to tell you. The weekend part. It's catchy. Catchy um, tune. Yeah. Did you guys watch the show? The Idol? The Idol. No. Hell no. It, uh, I watched the first episode. It, it was, was very it, bad. The reviews you saw were accurate. No. Yeah. And as of now, Madonna has completed that tour, and uh, that Pepsi commercial came out. And Back on uh, top, baby. I guess I respect that over time she changed her style. That's always a good thing. I think that if she had tried to sound like she was from the 80s and 2000s and onward, it would have been particularly sad. But like, it always felt like every album was just chasing what was already going on instead of redefining uh, or coming up with something new on her own for fun. And uh, it got real stale real fast and yeah. stayed stale. Sure. Yeah. But again, when you're having nine number one records in a row. Yeah, why change, right? Why, why change stop? the approach, right? Why would I, you stop? I understand. Um, but I think she fancies herself an artist, you know yeah. what I mean? So, like, there's got to be a piece of her that's kind of like, mm, are we just doing the same thing everybody's doing? You know, like, she's got to know that. Sure. You know? sure. If I may punch in a prediction here. Hit me. I think we get a new record by Madonna in 2025. I Why think that this? sitting on her buns after this tour and not having put out an album in a few years, I think that's where it's going to go. And you know what? Put on your prediction hat even further, Nostradamus. Mm-hmm. What's it going to sound like? Late Hootie and the Blowfish vibes. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's her country album. Okay. I'm, I mean, uh, she, she'd be following the trends mm-hmm, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> 